есть, есть такая теория, называется теория Айдов. There's a theory, it's called Eidos theory. I don't know if you know it. Plato's Eidos. It's a theory that all ideas that haven't been pronounced or realized, they exist somewhere there in some sphere that's called Plato's Eidos. That's why we people, we have nothing to be done to just to kind of take these ideas from there. We don't really generate anything. We just kind of get plugged to this cloud where the ideas live. And this is how we create a future. So about the future, we're going to talk uh, the future of the high-tech industry here in Russia. So uh, getting plugged into this Plato's Iris. Mazapolyansky, Vadim, I'm a uh, uh, positive technologies managing director. So and to talk about, I uh, have a quite serious guests here. Igor Lapatin, director uh, of uh, kernel development. Alexei Tatmakov. Alexei Takmakov, Head of Corporate Product Development and Basic Technology. He had quite a few big experience background and he worked in Kaspersky Lab and uh, B2B line of products he was responsible for. Uh, Alexei Andreev, Managing Director in Corporate uh, Security and Positive Technologies. Konstantin Osipov, Technical Director and uh, he is now co-founder and is uh, still uh, development. Okay. That's just what he told me. Denis Karablev. Uh, he said, uh, when a flute is playing, he kind of loses his mind and he drinks warm vodka, 200 milliliters. Well, actually, Denis doesn't drink at all. All this time, he's been developing uh, 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 linear uh, breakthrough products and positive technologies. Then, uh, this is the place of Victor Kantor, a big data MTS center director. Sergey Yakushkin, director of uh, tool developments of Synta Core. Hello. So, guys, to start, uh, let's uh, say what we're going to be talking about for the last year and a half, almost all uh, foreign vendors left Russia, including those who are monopolies in the Russian market. And we had no chance to enter the market with our uh, Russian technologies. Now it looks like the field is clear and we have all the chances to enter this market and to enter different segments. What segments are they? So what do you think? Uh, where the technology is going to go to? What vectors, what trends, and what vectors, what areas of this field uh, should be? Well, I think what's very important, not only for the near future we need to look at, but also a bit farther and to see what's happening in our segment in open processing technologies that are quickly uh, picking up. That's like a quick format. Uh, vendors left, uh, but customers are still here and they're expecting the same level of service and product uh, that those vendors were offering them. So, and uh, the first technological breakthrough that we need to make is to set up production of uh, software at the same level that those foreign vendors had. And it's uh, quite a significant technological task that all of us as industry uh, should realize. We had this point in history when we had to uh, go through certain distance uh, for a short period of time and I think it's a similar moment right now and we need to build up the industry producing uh, software at the level of foreign vendors and I think this is quite significant challenge. Could you give us uh, one, two, three uh, areas where it should be done? Uh, well, I can tell you about myself. First of all, we need to learn how to build clouds. We need to learn how to provide this level of service in, in cloud infrastructure that uh, that Azure, uh, Azure and Ajax had. Thank you, Konstantin. 
мне кажется, надо примерно все, но uh, я попробую назвать. I think approximately we need to do everything, but let me say this. For example, everybody is trying to have the input substitution for RT systems and SCAD systems in, uh, in, in industry, so they're trying to substitute uh, databases like Subhana, they're trying to substitute this one too, but uh, oftentimes with ARP, uh, Teradata, uh, it's an analytical uh, storage. In fact, uh, CAD systems, optimization of uh, projecting, projecting anything, designing uh, designing bridges and many others. So there are systems of design, but they're all foreign. So I, I'm not sure that we can substitute all of them with domestic products, but we can somehow do something with open uh, software, something that is uh, available in the global community, which are also foreign. So let's see how it's going to be developing. Thank you, Dennis. So how are those vectors are moving with my own. So I think that all this uh, excitement about uh, you know, Western vendors that they leave, so that's quite sad, and I have this phantom pains, and we as a global industry, uh, we should contribute uh, on top of what uh, we need to do. It's quite sad what we need to build, uh, that something that you could touch, and today you don't have them anymore. So it's... Uh, it's a little bit reflecting on what uh, hardly we can do ourselves with this, and so we have to restore those pieces. And I agree that consorts helps us a lot, and we can take a lot of things from them. But on the other hand, when we have such niches and the vacuums uh, uh, where our products go to, like those empty spaces, and we can create a proper ecosystem uh, enters. And it always, uh, when you go there and you have to fight for customers, but when you have this niche that is empty on the top, and people with technical background, so you immediately have this like wins, and you can actually build something uh, from scratch and beautifully and actually it doesn't happen like this oftentimes it's difficult I think uh, there is a great number of things uh, that uh, should be built that evolutionary they got this yesterday we're presenting firewall a new generation and I think uh, uh, we are if we're competing uh, with other people, so we were competing with them for a long time. It would take many years, but now we, we had to do it like for one year and a half. And now we have to, in this in this regard, it was a good point. So this is like we have to make a leap of faith, so to speak. We have uh, some clients that were already only for ideal products, for perfect products. And now, on the other hand, so there are certain blocks that based on which you can make a new steps. Uh, that can be an optimistic, like silver lining, but if you talk about a niche, I think here in Russia we had food tech, uh, fintech, and machines that was based on somebody's technologies and it still exists, and, and you have this but it's such niche as hardware, and we'll be talking about it with my colleagues, uh, so we don't quite understand what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And it looks a bit empty right now. So, Alexei, your opinion about those areas? A few thoughts. One. There were areas that we didn't have design and we didn't go to those areas and we did it on purpose and somewhere uh, with uh, we will enter it uh, being more excited because yesterday it didn't feel that it's right. How can you push out these global solutions that actually had 10, 20 year history? And we didn't go there on purpose and now we uh, have to go there and no matter what we have, we just have to cover it, you know, that they left. It's kind of inevitable. In some uh, regard, there will be some breakthroughs, and somewhere there are areas uh, where we had a complementary expertise. Uh, there are areas uh, where we're going to jump in because we have to, and I, I expect that in those areas we'll have a little bit of a decrease because we didn't have a necessity to go there a commodity covered uh, uh, this niche we didn't go in those areas we didn't have manpower to do that we didn't have investment and now we'll have to do this what areas you're talking about for example 
NGFV topic. This is what uh, Denise was talking about. NGFW. This is this is what Denise was talking about. So what this topic is about? So so they're global players and their standard. Uh, of building a new generation firewalls. Uh, there are three main ones, global companies, uh, that make best solutions. So, and people understand that the market of NGFW, this is their market. So in Russia, there were players that were more kind of niche players. So now we as a country, we have to make breakthroughs. So because there are no alternatives. And also, it has to do with big systems of uh, controlling data, data management. So all big uh, control systems and analytics, this is foreign solutions. We have our own, like uh, open source mainly, but um, call them products that can be scalable across the country. I wouldn't call them that. And of course, uh, this regards hardware too. From the good things, all high-tech story has legacy. This is the load to carry, because there are a lot of uh, legacy products we have so and should be compatible, and all the global players, uh, they're carrying this load. So, Opportunities we have in many areas, we can do certain things, in, take into account uh, global development, and we don't have to carry this load. And that's a good start, and uh, we can make breakthroughs in many areas. So there is also quite a thin line. So somewhere it's going to be easy, somewhere it's not. So it's great that we don't have to carry this heavy load in the modern world. Uh, people uh, don't need any more in the modern world. So everything is changing. Approaches, architecture, clouds, uh, hardware, working with data, uh, how this uh, work with data is built and all that. So I would support my colleagues here that uh, there is a necessity to use open standards in, and of course software we need to use them too and, and we need to invest in those as well and the first of all this is design and development of such processors because right now all this equipment is made not by Russian companies and their monopoly on that and secondly the means for uh, developers so that they can uh, uh, write optimized programs for this uh, processors so so all those elements that we build a system from so and I think that uh, we shouldn't forget about this either ecosystem for developers uh, this is what we need and I think it's a very very important thing I would like to add here I would like to add here uh, they, they left but this they still here where? Here? In our head? No. Very important things that happen to people that the customer stopped looking at the uh, domestic software as like a bad car that they produce in Russia. They actually look at it as a serious thing. So there are certain serious changes that happen in people's head. So when I say some of them remained, so there is some uh, a very big uh, sanctioned bank and they still have IBM in frame and many uh, generations of, uh, uh, of uh, programmers had this mainframe, so somehow they, they keep supporting this mainframe and they keep working with that. And if we look at Russian railways, uh, so they still work with IBM mainframes and and, uh, and with all the process and mainframes, starting with Cabal. And so many things, they don't, don't change. That's what I wanted to indicate. Victor? Uh, Victor Kantor, director uh, of uh, MTS Big Data Center. So your opinion on the areas we uh, need to develop in our country. I would like to add to the topic of uh, import substitution of uh, foreign vendors. Of course, it's going to be difficult and understand that we will be uh, 
getting used to what we're used to and so some pessimism that we can see in the air so i'm not sharing this pessimism because there are certain advent еще до там событий последних там лет все равно сидеть на зарубежных вендорах было очень больно вот та же самая упомянутая тирадата например она мало того что там к софту привязываешься, так они еще и продавали программно-аппаратный комплекс. То есть их софт был железозависимый. И вот сидит ваша компания, мало того, что на софте, еще и на железе. Если софт вас более-менее устраивает, железо все равно устареет, все равно износится и все равно придется снова приходить к ним покупать. Свое решение, чтобы разработать, нужно потратить много времени. И поэтому э, столько времени заложить и настолько заранее это забюджетировать и начать делать, ну, реалии, когда бизнесу нужно всегда быть адаптивным, ну, не позволяют так заранее это все запланировать и сделать. В итоге это некая такая игла, на которой мы все сидели, мучились, ну и вот наконец-то мы с нее слезем. Возьмем open source, чуть-чуть допишем. Сначала будем плеваться. Будут э, люди из бизнеса говорить, ну, пожалуйста, сломайте как-нибудь. So anyway, we'll just replace that. And it's a very important thing uh, as far as the replacement goes. So we cannot just uh, improve everything from this moment on. So we just need to set the priorities right and set the priorities right, as I said. So I would like to add a few words uh, to this. Uh, the Western vendors have uh, left the country. But if we just check this more deeply with the Linux core, there are plenty of open and closed products and we'll find our developers. We just try to be a visionary. We didn't have boundaries. Вот сейчас, когда and a lot of developers were leaving the country. Now this uh, is much more popular in Russia. But what's going to happen to them if we leave? What's going to happen if we leave? So it seems like for lots of developers, all of the Western vendors uh, have taken away their developers, and the developers who have decided that they are not going to leave the country anyhow, they have stayed in the Russian companies, right? And uh, in the future, I guess, all those uh, rivers uh, that uh, take away the brains uh, from the country uh, will somehow become much more shallow, so somehow it's changed. Uh, it seems like it, you sound very pragmatic, and uh, you are technical people, and you just do not throw the words uh, here and where, here and there, but uh, you actually see that there is a field which is cleaned up, there are people with brains, and the people with brains uh, actually create uh, big-scale Western projects and products, so we have quite a great, quite a good capacity to develop uh, our, own, our own solution, a very solid and respected one, but it's a good point, but let's just speak about another more painful thing about hardware. Igor, what do you think about hardware? What would be our hardware ambitions uh, to develop our own har hardware industry, hardware manufacturing industry? I think we should be looking with optimism to the future. So we think uh, that there is a certain number of companies that have been actively tackling the development of uh, their own solutions and uh, in many cases, uh, it's open architecture. So we would like to mention the RISC-V architecture. Sergey, who's sitting here, will uh, explain its advantages uh, much more in detail. So I guess there are many chance chances for it to succeed. On the other hand, uh, as we develop uh, the uh, hardware, like for example, system on chip, uh, design uh, are extremely complicated, uh, they are very slow processes, so, so we should not expect quick results, but I guess in the long run we'll be able to cope with that. 
развития всей индустрии. Uh, been there with this nanometer technology and uh, we had uh, reached uh, the limits there so some time ago the heterogeneous system started growing so we had to complicate and make more complex the design so we just need to focus on the exact fields uh, so starting from the very early stages we just need to make uh, the top level models more complicated and more complex models and accelerate the production of the new devices <clears throat> that uh, the business requires so this process uh, was running and uh, growing in the international society so we started developing that and there were a few attempts uh, so one of the most successful architectures is risk 5 that Igor mentioned is the architecture which, which was created in the university environment which uh, got our experts interested that were involved in its development and uh, the risk 5 architecture nowadays is a very well balanced and in international community uh, so a lot of uh, Chinese uh, and Indian companies uh, actually inform additional bonuses inform additional bonuses in terms of the motivation to implement uh, the earlier solutions uh, to a bigger scale. It's an international uh, thing, uh, but uh, we can be ahead uh, of other countries. So I think this is what I mean to say. But can we actually check up for the safety of the hardware that is made uh, outside Russia? Igor, uh, if we speak about proprietary architectures, we cannot guarantee this, of course. Uh, so I guess uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to guarantee uh, that the hardware with the enclosed architecture would guarantee you that. But if we speak about the hardware which is developed based upon open standards, uh, then I think... Uh, can use it as a black box, as a black box, and uh, check and verify this hardware for specifications. But it's a full fledged. So, the only case when we can guarantee the security and safety, when we have all of the materials available top to bottom, and we can check the entire stack, <coughs> somehow test it and verify with the automated controls and automated tools to make sure that it's safe. Of course, we cannot guarantee it 100%, but it's more or less uh, uh, safe, uh, so there, is, there are no special features, uh, no backdoors, uh, for instance. Uh, so we just need to make sure that this process is open security-wise. Let's now speak about cloud. Of course, it's not so easy with the hardware, but cloud services are growing in Russia. A lot of uh, providers had already bought uh, some hardware for their cloud services, and they can now exist for quite a long time with the existing uh, hardware. But uh, are there any problems that uh, cloud providers are now facing? Alexey, over to you. I think there are problems, and uh, you say that uh, they bought some hardware, but you cannot just buy hard hardware uh, beforehand. Uh, we don't have such uh, warehouse and facilities, but facilities. But we have new hardware. We have it here. For example, we are running out of racks. So we are running out of uh, uh, space in the data centers. So we just need to build new build new data centers somebody else should tackle that in terms of hardware we just uh, need to buy CPUs uh, memory we just need to power them somewhere 
it's a big scale infrastructure you need to build it and you need to build it not just in moscow uh, we would like to have some distributed data centers and uh, our consumers would like to have reliability our data centers should be reliable thus we should make them distributed we need to build it and uh, we lack hardware for that uh, it's in short supply but on the other hand we have a user in place it's an average uh, enterprise smb user and they have been using azure for all of their life now they check our cloud solution and they see a lot less services whether it's SaaS, PS services, um, software as a service, etc. But um, they just uh, try to invent something to bridge the gaps. But uh, how come there are so many? Uh, how come there are so few of them? Why would uh, a vendor from IRP go to SaaS? Uh, so they would just use this on premise design. And they will not just waste the time of their developers there. So we need just to make them interested. And how can we make them interested? We just uh, need to provide enterprise vendors uh, with the on-prem cloud systems, and they should not be different from a public cloud system. So it's somehow or rather, they should have a hybrid system. And uh, it's pretty hard to do technically. Pretty hard to do technically. So these on-prem clouds inside the enclosed perimeter are somehow related to the public cloud. So they should always be the same substrate uh, so that all of the pass providers join. Uh, what do you say that, uh, that this trend uh, in the cloud in Russia is growing and uh, which kind of cloud by the way uh, a homegrown uh, cloud or an outer cloud solution i wouldn't say that there was no trend for cloud we always had an enterprise segment with the private cloud vmware we had vmware everywhere so you can entitle it a private cloud uh, whatever but on-prem 80 percent uh, of the enterprises uh, rolled out that VMware solution. But uh, nowadays, uh, they can no longer have such an opportunity, so they look for other options. An SMB segment, well, it's very hard to buy hardware here. You just need to save your money on admins, and they go, they go public, they go to public clouds. Enterprise is ready, SMB is starting to run there. Yes, and they, in the enterprise, they would like to get a hybrid hybrid cloud solution. They have the, the on-prem solution, they would like to get a part of it on public cloud and it should be connected. What about the safety and security of the cloud storage? Uh, you know, the, we had leakages, leakages there from public clouds. And people have traditionally been treating these public clouds uh, very, very skeptically. Uh, as far as the leakages uh, go, we have nothing to do with that. But globally, uh, globally, there are two aspects here. One aspect is the safety of the cloud itself, and then the things that are done on the cloud and the safety of the cloud. There was a proper trend mentioned due to the lack of the hardware a lot of people go on cloud and they start uh, deploying their infrastructure and it's uh, the thing that you have uh, that you have to control you have to control and it's much more in inconvenient for you and much more expensive to control uh, so security wise it gets worse and that's what we recommend as a company and the second story uh, which is much more interesting to me uh, is the way to develop uh, the product with the use of the cloud because when the services start they have a few services then elasticity goes up so such products and technologies that are required to make this software out of the box more safe uh, security wise that's uh, one of the best uh, 
tasks uh, for our company, and I think in Russia we have a good stack of technology. But there is a subtle moment, uh, it just reaches the cloud solution later than the on-prem solution. So I think we have a joint effort to fulfill so that we have this stack of solutions and all of the uh, clouds so that new services that start doing this work uh, that we discussed with you, creating new services, they will just make these services much more safe in the first place. And as far as the cloud security goes, uh, maybe someone will help me out with that. Yeah, what's, what's good uh, out of that? We have limited resource. We have a limited resource. It's the hands of our engineers. It's our capabilities. It's the speed at which we can grow and develop. And what's exactly happening and what's, what I haven't seen before is that this request for collaboration Alexei was mentioning uh, this cloud thing. So in terms of um, making and building this joint technology, we are working with VK. We are working with VK and uh, we run this expert analysis in terms of what is supposed to be done there in terms of security. We do it together with them to make sure that the cloud that the uh, VK is making should be very secure, very secure for the users. So in this, uh, in this case, there is demand in the Russian market to give a lot more. And we can give a lot more uh, where our expertise lies. So many tracks for technological cooperations. Uh, it's so good that we have them here. I haven't seen as many before, which is good. I will add a few words to, about the cloud safety. What's safer, to have a cloud or have your own server on-prem? The cloud uh, provides you with uh, something more than your own system. So somebody had already done some work, some work for you. So, for example, if we speak about VK, VK had done that. Or, for example, we did it partially on our own, or we called you because you have this expertise. So when the customer joins the cloud, or, for example, when they check their own service in the cloud, someone had already done some work for them. If that work was done properly, if the customer trusts the vendor, they will get much more security than on their own server. I would just like to add a few more words. Uh, previously, we spoke about the open CPU architecture and uh, hardware security. I think we should continue this idea because here, as researchers, we found some vulnerabilities in the Intel CPUs a few years back. And that's just uh, the item which really worries people. This uh, closed architecture, the closed uh, technology that we use proves to be a big problem in terms of uh, our ability to develop the solution, uh, in terms of security that we get. Uh, the actual thing is uh, what's happening, and I treat this very optimistic, optimistically, what's happening these days. We are trying to very uh, quickly move towards the open uh, CPU architecture. It's uh, a lot of freedom and uh, security guarantee, because it's open architecture, because the entire community will be checking and monitoring this. Second of all, we try to collaborate technologically, technologically we collaborate between the industries, and uh, we just need to be open, we need to be ready to be open, and it gives each other an opportunity to enrich one another. 
we give uh, our expertise and the guys give us their own technology for the audit and that become open this technology becomes very close to the completely open technology and there is an ability to change things uh, for more security to make more safe uh, processors and uh, include uh, the integrated security in the infrastructure yes alexei is quite right this this definition the co-design the co-design principles for hardware and software also improves the performance and the functionality. It's a great story that currently for the Russian industry, we have a chance to cooperate. Uh, so these uh, joint design issues are being tackled. Let's speak about the safe uh, development. So it doesn't really matter what we develop, neural networks, cloud solutions, but the safe and secure development is key here. Denise, uh, what's uh, this secure development all about? There's definitely demand for secure development, because normally I say that uh, for CyberSec uh, 2017, we spoke that we protect against hackers and uh, people said uh, no hackers there are no incidents nowadays it seems like that there are so many incidents the company's policy is uh, not to make any disclosures so when we make some kind of new software especially where it becomes much more hectic and it's getting more hectic where the data lies uh, it's very sensitive so immediately they try to cope with some security principles in the development that's one thing and another thing what i can see in the market it's not about uh, that the managers wouldn't want to do that it's just because the developers uh, still do not understand uh, and they don't have this security concept uh, explained i remember when i was a programmer so if it works with you your code works and it doesn't work with someone else it's their problem because it works with you but uh, it seems like that uh, in one case it works and all the rest it's the problems of other people but then industry was actually uh, changing behavior agile development and it's very difficult to find a developer who does not think about uh, their product as a quality they all run tests and it's normal it's good it's welcome security is on the edge of the quality but still people need to be aware of security if this thing is useful we use it if it's not we don't uh, but nowadays uh, these things uh, can relate to security and as a company we spend a lot of effort on that and we participate in secure development we try to explain it's just the same as the redundancy and disaster recovery uh, so you have two servers one of them is shut down but the other one is still running but people complain about overheads and limitations uh, but it's still it's going to work but just make it make sure it's going to be secure and safe uh, you can of course break down everything and this whole story starts so if we speak about secure development so the principal cornerstone here is about uh, the developers in russia who thinks how many developers are here starting from 500,000 to 1 million and of course some people have fled the country but anyway uh, a few hundred thousand uh, security guys and half of them really work so we speak about 1 million technical experts who are quite wise and understand about the software and they still know about the security imagine how safe it's going to be when they're going to do it on the daily basis uh, not when they just uh, program for two hours but when they watch YouTube about security aspects so that's what the future like uh, which we're getting closer to this cul cultural paradigm still needs to be changed it's a very interesting trend you mentioned so we work with the conscience uh, consciousness consciousness of the developer I mean uh, consciousness of the developer in actual fact uh, programmers are uh, very religious people agile is a religion so there should be some kind of a martyr some kind of a bible all those attributes and if 
it hasn't happened, there is no religion. So for security, we should also create some kind of religion. So it's great, and I think security is the religion of the future, and that's where Russia can make the first step forward, uh, cyber security. We started from scratch. I've heard this point that all of the developers uh, have these mindsets targeted at uh, quality. I think not all of the developers and not everywhere have this security mindset. Um, it's different everywhere. So I think I've seen different level of uh, consciousness of the developers uh, somewhere. They do not create the, the auto test uh, because uh, it should be done by some other engineer. So what gives us these requirements for safe development? Uh, safe development sometimes is dictated from the top. Whatever we want it, whether we want it or not, we just need to cope with that. And the safe development requirement also uh, has to deal with the quality of our software the quality of our software. So we'll have to create these automatic, automated tests. We have to do these uh, fuzzing tests uh, and uh, simulation should be run. We therefore increase the quality of our software, increase the quality of our software. That's the update uh, dictated from the top uh, increases the quality of the regular software. Let me add a few words. Of course, we can discuss this topic where we belong, where we belong in the context of the safe development. But uh, what makes me much more happy is that in 2019, nice bug bounty platforms appeared in Ru Russia. We released the bug bounty platform and it cost furor. We have good customer base and the customers bring their software for research, for researchers, and they pay money. And uh, good amounts of money have been paid to the researchers. So all these big things start from very small things. What we did right is that we created uh, a site where you can check the quality and the level of the software in terms of the security in terms of its security and this bug bounty is a good example it's a proper step in the good direction wherever we belong it's good if there are bugs found uh, that's the point if there are vulnerabilities found that's the point if there is a site where you can look for them and verify them experts will work on that and it will push people forward to make code much more safe and secure it will push them forward much uh, more properly than any other measures like legal measures uh, so good point it's clear about uh, security you have a comment right here we have so many interesting topics, uh, so security is a really painful topic. You mentioned hardware aspects previously, all those new stimulating methods, uh, incentives, uh, help us uh, put uh, this software approach uh, to the system on cheap designs. But not only that, there is also some tool aspect and some code analysis aspect uh, where we have good knowledge, like for example, the Institute of System Programming in the country releases static code analyzers and there are plenty of companies that look for vulnerabilities and look for the tools of the vulnerabilities and we have additional capabilities of yet adding hardware hardware uh, components there which is a good opportunity we should also use let's just move to the next topic and uh, victor i have a question to you it's regarding ai artificial intelligence artificial intelligence uh, is the thing that we can call uh, a step of the evolution you remember we started from horses and then a Ford T appeared, uh, an automobile, and everything changed. So AI looks as revolutionary here as uh, automobile previously. 
abroad we have uh, lots of examples like chat gpt it's very interesting to communicate with chat gpt we don't have anything similar here would you say that we'd uh, lack lag behind uh, the civilization here we will not lag behind uh, but there will be a feeling that we'll be catching up with them uh, from time to time of course we've been given this example this chat gpt each uh, training step would uh, spend would cost them eight million dollars and our companies are not so prompted to spend so much money there but they are more targeted at business but it seems like that if you spend money on that you can create such interesting and powerful powerful things like chat gpt which change everything more or less fundamentally uh, but i think we'll be learning more and invest more into fundamental things but whether we'll be lag lagging behind or not it's very easy to borrow these uh, principles uh, we know the architecture on which we can run such a solution. So I think it's a, just an engineering solution, and I think we will have a similar solution. And uh, there have been a number of attempts uh, to repeat that. Uh, we understand that those were very quick attempts to repeat that. But, uh, also, there is uh, another school of thought. Uh, I think we should uh, uh, not make a universal chat GPT will uh, just provide a more targeted artificial intelligence. Igor, I have a question to you regarding um, regarding the training, uh, how we train uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, in order to make it smarter, we need to train it. Uh, if you put this uh, query, to, query for Russian space, uh, uh, you can find some uh, images of uh, ships flying in the clouds uh, so you can actually play with this and toy with this uh, how can you actually train artificial intelligence when you cannot get access to this source uh, uh, material i would refer to your previous question uh, i think one of the biggest beneficiaries of the deep learning ai are not meta are not the meta company for example, but uh, the NVIDIA, um, uh, an NVIDIA that sells uh, uh, shovels to the gold diggers, because it requires lots and lots of very expensive uh, GPUs, and uh, we need to make uh, server farms uh, out of them. And of course, you can sell more hardware or just uh, do the co-design special hardware should be manufactured special designs and uh, the training process for neural networks should be also be optimized a lot of players follow that path and i think uh, we should take a look into that direction as well uh, so as we speak about uh, uh, the quotes from neural networks, uh, if we do not get the answers we expect from neural networks, uh, we obviously see that the results have been adjusted. But it's due to very closed circuit these uh, neural networks utilize. I think in terms of deep learning, it's not a very typical story because a lot of research is conducted openly in the open space. Uh, so this paradigm uh, of data scientists and those people who specialize in deep learning is uh, maximum openness of both the code and the models. So I think the openness of uh, the models and the clarity of data sets is the key to success is that the, what these trained uh, neural networks will give the proper results that we expect. Uh, does ChatGPT uh, have uh, an open resource? No, ChatGPT is uh, closed. Uh, infrastructure closed solution as far as security of networks we just still need to come up uh, with new methods how we're going to control and monitor everything but uh, that's when the system is too difficult it's too complicated we just need to reverse engineer it and it will be very tired and we'll be sick and tired 
reverse engineer these systems, looking for hideouts. But there may be a different approach in AI and neural networks. Uh, there is a different approach. What if our algorithm has memorized uh, this selection and has changed? But still, it's not capable of uh, doing proper guesses. So the people guess that let's uh, just show them another selection which the neural network hasn't seen yet. So similarly, we will we'll provide the methods which will not basically mean that uh, we will uh, check all of the weights and make conclusions in the neural network. But somehow we will be validating them and uh, we'll make sure that there are no things that may cause doubt. Another point is that we should not hurry with the conclusions and given very strange results uh, uh, that you get from the neural network. Uh, if you put Russia as a request, uh, there is nothing against that. Uh, and to make sure that the, these requests uh, um, uh, provide more appropriate answers, you just need to make these algorithms of uh, training more affordable and accessible. And again, you have five uh, generative uh, networks and give uh, the same question to them and check out all of their answers. You may analyze this information re accordingly. The next thing we would like to speak about is the open source. So it seems like everyone spoke about this open source. Uh, open source being a trend, it's an international trend and the trend in Russia. But the key point for open source is uh, the community. So GitHub uh, includes uh, 100 million people, it's a huge community. What are we supposed to do? Um, making a community for the Russian open source and how do we make sure that we do not fall out of uh, the world trends by creating our own open source solution. Uh, whoever takes this question. Till we are let in GitHubs um, and uh, till there is no discrimination, we will be making fair use of it. If something like that starts, but I, I doubt that. I doubt that, that starts. It's unlikely. Well, if it starts, we'll start our own GitHub. What can we do? There's a mutual dependency. Not only Russian developers require GitHub, but the international community also requires the input of the Russian developers. Don't forget about that. Did you have a comment? But you've not been given the mic. Uh, Alexey, then? Uh, let me speak about open source. Uh, till we have GitHub here, nobody would ever go and check the Russian analog or Chinese analog, un unless it's prohibited by the state. But as uh, the community of the developers, we just need to take domains, uh, domains of knowledge. I mean, it's considered that the open source is either it doesn't belong to anyone or it belongs uh, to everyone. But actually, open source belongs to core contributors. Every open source project actually belongs to the core contributors. It's them who define the vector of the development. They identify the path of future development. And uh, they identify which uh, commitments to borrow and which commitments to reject. Sometimes the contributors would not just let in some of the contributions. Uh, therefore, the open source uh, projects really do belong to someone. They belong to those people who contribute the most. Uh, what are we supposed to do here? We need to contribute more to open source. Uh, the developers need to understand that it's not sufficient uh, just to use an open SSL. We need to improve it. We need to make contributions. And as an industry, we need to make a statement like this. My friends, tomorrow we will stop hiring engineers without GitHub accounts from day one, from starts from tomorrow, for example. Well, jokes aside, when I take uh, a look at the people's CV, 
I'd always check if they have a GitHub account mentioned in their curriculum vita. And I'd always check for the contributions uh, this potential candidate uh, that produced this CV uh, had put in there. What do you think? A lot of things have been said. You look like you're about to explode and start swearing. No, no, no. Uh, I just take a look at this as a vendor, as an open source vendor. Uh, who does this open source belong to? Obviously, it belongs to me as a vendor. It's an obvious answer, to me at least. But uh, any open project always have uh, someone behind it. So we can call it a vendor. We can, we can say that this open source uh, allows us just to take a few projects from the Apache Foundation and develop them. Uh, GitHub has been mentioned here a number of times, but we actually left GitHub when there were risks that Russia would be completely banned in GitHub, and we just uh, stopped it there, stopped our hosts uh, there so that we do not de depend on the global GitHub. So our contributors know, so in order to contribute us, we just need to check a different site. But uh, do you take the audience from there? No. But there's a big myth uh, about open source, actually. So there's always a story, there's always a story that there is some number of people will make good use of it, and some people will find a problem, and some people will send a patch, and some people uh, accept that patch. But in reality, this share of external contributions for the open source projects uh, can be very, very different from one project to another. But in some open source projects, there are very few con contributors. Of course, Linux is an exception. ClickHouse uh, has a lot of contributors. contributors. But uh, this is it. And I guess if we do something about open source, well, this whole discussion uh, starts from this chat GPT. What are we going to do about it? And uh, we have TCL large models. Uh, it's the trend for today. It's yet another step towards the development of the artificial intelligence. But that's, that's the step that we take today, and tomorrow there will be another one. And the same discussion goes to the uh, cloud uh, software. It's good that uh, we do not use Azure, for instance, uh, to a bigger extent. But in the West, uh, uh, a, lo a lot of uh, people are locked in those vendors and we started going to the hybrid cloud here in russia so i think it's the same with the open source we can jump forward and we wouldn't need to come up with anything new here uh, but developing the collaboration culture for example, if we take uh, this conversion in the open source, if we make sure that our conversion is higher on average than elsewhere, so I think we will achieve quite a lot. Uh, what, which kind of conversion I mean? You use it, you found a problem, you send a patch, so you actively participate. You actively participate, uh, so if you are capable of making sure that in our community such type of community collaboration is uh, going to come up to a higher level, then it's great. It's actually a feature of our culture, the culture of collaboration, so we don't need to forget about it. So these are my ideas. Uh, you've deployed your own repository. repository. Do you have a mirror in GitHub? I think uh, our project 
includes uh, dozens of repositories. So for some of them, we have those mirrors, but our repositories are open. So you can check that all of our tickets are open, but we have it on our domain. But where is uh, more activity? Where is there more activity? Not with the contributions. We have more activity on our side, because this activity is uh, a switch. It's, it's, it's just like a switch. All social media is a platform of trust. Uh, the platform of trust with, and the trust is gained for years. So there may be some people who, who stopped checking Facebook pa pages, not because of the bans. People started using Facebook uh, less. At a certain point in time, we lose our trust towards a certain platform and we build different connections and there is nothing horrible about it. I would like to add something to what Kostya has said. It resonates uh, with me uh, about collaboration because we speak a lot about open source, uh, we speak about what are we supposed to do and what we need to do. And in our company, we thought about how we treat open source. We had initiatives uh, throughout the years, and there were technologies that we developed initially. We found the use to open source in Ethereum and some big scale projects. Uh, we applied uh, that uh, in the embedded. We applied that uh, in messengers in Miranda, I guess. Uh, so I guess uh, it was all optional, it was all optional. It was an initiative of certain people who developed the technology for the company's purposes, but in parallel they had a mirror on GitHub. And uh, that went on for a number of years. But in the year 2022 we just sat and take, took a different look at open source. What was our idea? So, for example, there is a problem in the industry, and the industry lies uh, with uh, some companies about how to catch the hackers and how to look for them. Uh, people leave company A and they join company B, and the company B starts getting this expertise. Uh, it's a problem of the industry, but uh, there are no system changes, there are no systematic changes, and uh, we claim that we have, uh, we have a lot of expertise uh, here in this field, so what uh, we would like to do, what we would like to achieve as a company, we would like to create uh, such conditions for the community so that this expertise stops being private and it starts being open. We need to, it to be available to all of the vendors, to all of the people who build this. And before someone makes the first step, uh, there will be no coming out. So that's our expertise. We have nothing to hide. Uh, we have this in place. So we take a look at open source when we plan some activities, not as a positive company, which will take something to uh, the front line, but we will be given all of the expertise that we have accumulated and we have a few projects in the open source and very soon uh, they will start uh, shooting, so to speak. So we will become experts in terms of uh, detecting hackers and stopping the hackers. And we would call up to the entire community to contribute. Con to contribute. And for this, we need tools. And we are ready to uh, develop such tools to make this community more global. That's uh, where we belong. And that's where the collaboration is very good for me. We can make things uh, that can uh, not match with the existing approach. It's great, Alexei. Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, our time is uh, running out. And uh, finally, a, a blitz question. A blitz question to all of you. Imagine that each and every one of you would like to, would like to achieve something uh, for the company. Achieve something for the company. So your grandparents would uh, be proud of you. Now, would you please stipulate what exactly would you need for that? From one another, 
from the state, uh, from someone else, uh, what would be your question, what you need to do here? I would like to teach all of the companies make models of artificial intelligence using the models without direct exchange of data. But I think we can do it without direct ex exchange of data. So I think that's the thing I would like to, to make. Uh, but I don't know how. You can do it on your own with other companies as well, of course, with other companies as well. We need to have first pilots and first partners. It's very important to develop collaboration, and I think uh, this is where the state can help, and also education, in order to close the, uh, to bridge the gaps that we started having. We need to have new people, more people than were previously trained, like, for example, in the design of the hardware. We just need to spend more effort on design of hardware, and we need to have uh, joint si sites. GitHub, like, for, for instance, was mentioned, uh, is a distributed system, so we need to learn and borrow this model, taking into account possible risks, uh, making some spare fields and uh, safe sites for safe code exchange, also for exchanging open solutions and uh, support of the entire ecosystem if uh, there are some issues in the international uh, segment. We need to continue working internationally, but don't forget to create our own fundamental technologies. Okay, training, our own sites and collaboration. We listened to one another, you've said beautiful words. For technological breakthrough, it would be sufficient if our uh, um, if we remain very true to what we say, so... Yeah. Your responsibility. You promise and you take responsibility. Everyone should uh, do what they promised. Uh, Kostya? It's a very hard question. Of course, I agree. It really all depends on us. Uh, rather than Shaddai, Mr. Shaddai for the state, what do we need to start doing? You see, uh, DBMS is the evergreen. It's the evergreen topic. And each uh, year there is a new research uh, which is completely revolutionary, uh, performance-wise. Uh, so I doubt that there will be a moment when I say we have reached everything and we need to retire. No, I'm very happy to find that uh, the perception of the open uh, source software is changing, but uh, there is still a long way to go, especially it's obvious for a person who has been tackling this for 20 years. Uh, there's different level of maturity of the participants. For example, on the Ministry of the Digital Development, uh, we have a claim that open software is uh, free of charge and safe. Both things are fake. Kostya, it's a blitz question, so you don't need to go for too long. So I think we need to change that perception. Denis, I, I already have a microphone. I already have a microphone, thank you. In actual fact, uh, we are very modest people. We just need to create religion. That's what I said. So if we meet in a few years and we start discussing this question, how many developers take responsibility for their quality? Seems like not everyone does these days. If these numbers really grow, that's the thing that we do everything right. Over to you, then. A few things we need. We need to remain connected uh, with the global high-tech industry, whatever the geopolitical factors are. In this case, we can only enrich uh, with the global high-tech uh, moves uh, and understand where we can make some revolutionary steps. Uh, so there should be a deep connection with them. And second of all, 
there should be collaboration. I repeat that we can do a lot of more important things than our competitors. Why? Because we really have quite a lot of competences which we have accumulated over the years. If we collaborate much more technologically, we'll be ready to collaborate. We have great perspectives. And number three, I think is um, what we need, uh, we need a very open and transparent market where the best win, the best win, the more honest and transparent the competition, uh, the smaller the lobby, uh, the quicker we give to the more technological uh, companies, uh, financial supports, recognition, so that these companies will make other important steps. So I think these factors are fundamentally important. Thank you. Igor, uh, I would like to continue this idea of collaboration. I think we should all ask uh, each other to believe in one another to make just one leap uh, forward uh, towards our future of technology, because I believe all of the resources and all of the technologies and the time window is in place. Uh, so I think we just need to believe in ourselves and our partners in collaboration and uh, put our super efforts to reach that point in the future. It's good that none of you mentioned that we need money, give us money, the state needs to give us money, somebody owes us. It's good that you've never mentioned that. No, honestly, all of your replies were about uh, having all of the power and strength inside you. So the interaction between one another is actually uh, the guarantee that everything works. I really do believe in Russian brains and you as leaders of the industry, of the representatives of the key companies that are, in, in, that, that are taking very important positions. And I wish uh, you make Russia very great and technologically developed superpower. Thank you all.